What's going on gang? Vault Matrix here and today we are taking a look at Transformers Robots in Disguise Combiner Force Ultra B. Now Ultra B is made up of four technically five robots. We have Sideswipe, Strongarm, Bumblebee, Grimlock, and Drift. More on Drift later. Taking a look at Sideswipe and Strongarm first, you will see that both of them are severely lacking in paint just like drag, drag, strip, and wind break. But unlike those two, these are two completely different molds. Sideswipe is his typical Lamborghini-esque car. Transformation is very simple. Grab the hood of the vehicle and flip it forward like that. And then if you want, you can take the front hood and flip it open you don't have to. The directions don't say you need to. And then fold out the arms. Strong arm is similar, except you just stand strong arm up at the front of the vehicle and flip out the arms. And you end up with two very tiny, very under-detailed robot modes. And I do mean under-detailed, because there's not much going on with these two. There is a little bit of pain on their chests, and their head sculpts are okay. And their heads are okay painted as well. And I mean just okay. There is silver on the face and some blue on the eyes for Sideswipe. Silver on the face, blue on the eyes, and then the yellowish crest there for Strongarm. This is okay. It's not great, though. Next up is Bumblebee, and as you can see, it's painted pretty much just as much as his Deluxe Class version is. The alt mode here is significantly better than what I thought it was going to be. Transformation is ridiculous ridiculously simple. Come to the front fender and literally push it up from the bottom and then flip the front bumper and fender section and headlights up along the back. Stand the figure up, pull out the arms as part of the transformation, and then right here just very gingerly flip the head up. And that's it. Again we have a figure that is lacking in paint on pretty much the entire figure except for the chest. And the head sculpt. So there's one thing you do need to realize though. This figure holds the, or is, this figure is the chest of Ultra B. And you deploy the giant robot head by pushing on this little area right here by the abdomen. And then that pops the head up. But ultimately, sometimes you get two heads popping up. Next is Grimlock, who has a sword hanging off of his butt. The sword is what Drift turns into. Drift becomes the sword in this, in this setup. More on the sword in a little bit. Grimlock. Oh boy, Grimlock, buddy. What did they do to you? From maybe just behind the legs of the dyno mode forward, it looks like Grimlock. Yeah, arms can move. Face desperately needs more paint. I think his jaw is supposed to be black. I don't exactly remember. But then the back part of the dino mode. Oh boy. Now, according to the directions, there is something that is supposed to be able to flip over the sides here. But there's no joint or anything that can flip out. It's kind of odd because according to the directions, there's something here that's supposed supposed to be able to flip and extend out on top here, but everything's kind of glued and molded into place, so nothing can really move back there. Transformation is pretty easy. So we'll start with the head, grab the entire front of the dino mode, put the hands up, fold the head down, that will split it in half, and just go ahead and fold it until the head and arms snap into place. Fold the dino arms or legs forward and reach inside and flip out the robot arms. Sometimes you can't really get in there, so you have to push from the back. Then take the entire top section, split it open, and then flip up Grimlock's head. And the Grimlock we end up with is mostly black with a little bit of green on the chest. And that is definitely Grimlock's head sculpt. The team we have going here is fine, I guess. It's definitely different than what Menasaur is or the Stunticons are, and I do appreciate that. I do appreciate a little bit of variety as well. But 
eh, they're fine. Now, talking about the sword, I actually like the look of the sword. I think the sword is molded very, very well. There's just one little thing. Why did they mold a, well, what looks to be a screaming face into both sides of the sword? Is that supposed to be Drift? Is, is Drift screaming because he doesn't know what he's become and he wants, you know, it all to end? That's kind of creepy, Hasbro. Why'd you do that? Okay, let's go ahead and get into the merge sequence. Now, if you've watched my Minasaur review, Strong Arm and Sideswipe transform exactly the same way as the other limbs. So to start with, we'll go with Sideswipe, flip up the hood, come to what are the front legs of the, of the robot mode, flip out the hand, grab Sideswipe's head, flip that down, and covering the hole, and then extend the rear of the vehicle mode out, and that's it. That's all you got to do. Same thing with strong arm. Flip up the hood, flip out the giant robot hand, flip down the robot head and chest, extend the rear of the vehicle mode, done. Next for Grimlock. Split Grimlock in half, push the robot head in, fold up the robot fists back into the dino legs, fold the dino legs back along the elbow, so reverse the elbow, and then fold the arms up over the shoulders and turn it so that the front of the back or the back parts of the dino legs are pointing to the where the dino head is. That becomes the front of the legs. Come to the where the robot legs were and flip them 180 degrees around to form the butt of the giant robot mode. Like that. Next is Bumblebee, and he has probably the most interesting transformation of all of them. So, from robot mode, fold the robot mode head down, take the shoulders and arms and fold them along the back. Unfortunately, they don't really peg into place, they just kind of sit back there. Then take the legs and come to the sides of the bottom of the legs and fold out the wheels. And on the inside of the legs, flip out these black and blue panels and then the legs will scissor up and push out the connector ports like that. Do that for the other side as well. And then while you're doing that, you will inadvertently push the button extending the giant robot head. Then we can fold up these little panels and drop the Ultra B torso onto Grimlock and then add Sideswipe and strong arm. Oh, technically, I have that backwards. Sideswipe should be on this side. And strong arm should be on this side. And here we have Ultra B. As a cohesive unit, Ultra B looks actually pretty good, and I think it's a little bit better proportioned than Menasaur. It looks legitimately pretty darn good. I do like the head sculpt overall. It it looks good. You can store the sword on the back of Ultra B, just like you could on Menasaur. And there are tabs on either side of the sword that will tab into the back where these tab holes are. Just fair warning, though, they don't tab in very well. In fact, just getting them tabbed at all is next to impossible, especially on my figure. Your mileage may vary. Can hold the sword with no problem whatsoever. Though getting it into the hand is a little bit tricky. You kind of have to just shove it in and then get it pegged into place correctly and hope it stays. I do like the overall look of the figure. It is pretty poseable. Arms, well, are Super Sentai arms. Hips are actually much more poseable than I thought they were going to be. Only issue I have is nothing is locking these feet into place. So I thought, well, maybe I can lock it into place somehow by lifting up the, or lifting up Grimlock's robot hands, but that really doesn't do anything. So there's that. Overall, I think it's a good looking set. I think, I think I like it. Biggest complaint about the set, other than, you know, it feels a little cheap. It's not the best transformation. It doesn't look really all the, the figures don't look good individually, is the feet. And the pins here are a 
bit on the loose side, but I could deal with it. Once you get it in posed and just standing there, it's fine. Now, if you've watched my Menasaur review, you know that we can have some fun with these shoulder units. And by fun, I mean we can make horrible nightmares. Yep, totally horrible nightmares. Silly and stupid horrible nightmares. A quick size comparison between Bumblebee, or I'm sorry, Ultra Bee and Menasaur. You can see that Ultra Bee is just a smidge shorter than Menasaur, but together they both look pretty good. I would have loved to have seen both of these sets get a more deluxe treatment. Like, I don't know, deluxe class figures, given the style of Combiner Wars. Oh, and speaking of Combiner Wars, here is Combiner Wars Superion. As you can see, Superion is twice as tall as both of these guys. So, yeah, both of these guys are roughly the same height as a Titan's Return Voyager class figure. Now, that being said, makes you think of G1. Voyager class, or that Megatron, makes you think of G1. And G1 also has the Wreckers. And the Wreckers, these two can do a Rack and Ruin homage. Simply remove one of the shoulders, spin the Menasaur shoulder around, and connect them. And you have a double combiner thing going on here. Since Menasaur is a little bit taller, it doesn't perfectly line up, but it does work. And you can do this. And it's ridiculously stupid. I am almost tempted to get two more so I can just daisy chain them. Like, Menasaur, Ultra B, Menasaur, Ultra B. I'm very tempted to do that. For the target audience, Ultra B is fine. As long as we're talking about targeting like three and four year olds. For any kid older than that, these aren't, these aren't that great. I mean, the combiners I had when I was that age were a heck of a lot more fun. Yeah, they were bricks, I will freely admit that, but they were interesting bricks, dang it. <laughs> okay, that's just old man Balt getting on... Th okay, that's just old man Balt going, yeah, back in my day. It's fine. It's just, I don't think you're getting a lot for what you're paying for. Now, these guys at retail are going to retail for about, mm, I want to say 30. I think that's right. But... Yeah, so I, I honestly don't know. I don't have any kids in my life that this would be aimed at. My son is currently three years old, and he would much rather be watching Paw Patrol than Transformers. Maybe when he's a little older, he'll get into this kind of thing. But anyway, I think this is fine. I think Menasaur is fine. They're not great. They're just kind of fine. So, gang, I hope you've enjoyed this video review. As always, I'm Bolt Matrix. Ask you to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will catch you next time.